Coming up next, the Rio Grande Valley Empowerment Zone brings a community together for its sixth annual Remembrance of Murdered Victims. Plus, our chief reporter sits down with a student who created a video that went viral on social media. A notable Latino known for his role on That 70s Show kicks off this year's Distinguished Speaker Series. And we have an inside look at the Mercedes band Jaguar for this week's edition of Music Craft. We have all this and more. ETRGV TV starts now. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of UTRGV TV. I'm Rocio Villalobos. For this week's top story, the Rio Grande Valley Empowerment Zone brings together the friends and family affected for its sixth annual Remembrance for Murdered Victims. I went out to get the story. Remembering all whose lives were taken due to an act of violence, the Rio Grande Valley Empowerment Zone brings now. together the friends and families affected for its sixth annual Dia de los Recuerdos. Each year, the event takes on a theme, this year's being the Disney Pixar film Coco. In addition to the annual remembrance ceremony, it hosts monthly support groups. Friends. It's supposed to be a celebration of life, celebrating how they lived, not how they died, and remembering those good memories. As the families, they want to be able to grieve, they want to be able to cry. This is a place where they can do all those things and nobody's going to judge them. The Empowerment Zone serves 11 counties, but the bulk of the incidents due to domestic violence. Hector Garcia lost his ex-wife and daughter to a domestic incident. He came to the Empowerment Zone looking to find support. Since my story is still going, the investigation is still going. I like to express everything that I'm behind my chest to everybody because it released me. It released my stress. He shares what actions should be taken if one suspects another to be experiencing physical abuse in their household. You see a domestic violence, you hear, hear a domestic violence or anybody, get help. Don't keep it to yourself. Talk. 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 Say something. More than 30 victims were honored through a candlelight vigil, tribute video, and a balloon release. We're here to remember our son, Jose Domingo Castillo. He passed away in an accident driving with an intoxicated driver. Through God and the support of people we have met, we have found some peace that gives us strength to continue forward. The Empowerment Zone's Victims of Crime Prevention and Restoration Program works year-round to help put an end to senseless violence. In Alton, for UTRGV TV, I'm Rocio Villalobos. A UTRGV student video on the lack of parking on campus goes viral. Our chief reporter, Eliana Moreno, sat down with Roy Gonzalez to bring you the details. A UTRGV student used a drone and took to Twitter to voice his frustrations about the parking problem here on campus. Yep, that's me. And I just got a $30 parking violation for parking in the wrong zone. But what UTRGV doesn't understand is, there is no parking. Roy Gonzalez, a junior at UTRGV, made a video urging the university to make more accessible parking spots on campus. His video went viral after it reached almost 100,000 views online. The whole point, literally the only reason I made the video, was just so I could tweet it at UTRGV and I just wanted them to respond. That's all I wanted was like them to tweet back or, or retweet it or favorite it, like that's all I wanted. And then it turned into like, oh, well, what do you suggest? And I was like, well, I don't know. I'm an information systems major, you know? Gonzalez received a response from UTRGV, assuring him that the university is working diligently to resolve the parking issues, and asked him if he'd be interested in joining their parking task force, in which Gonzalez responded that he only wanted a special parking spot. The lack of parking spots has been in talks for some time by students as well as faculty. I spoke to the directors of parking and transportation at UTRGV to see what they have planned to fix the problems. We understand that students have concerns and we sympathize with the fact that sometimes you come during peak hours and you cannot find a uh, parking space that's close to the building where you're at. So we're doing a couple of things right now in the short term. Gomez says the university added 206 parking spots this summer, but they still plan on expanding parking lots as well as using a new technology that uses signs at parking lot entrances to show availability for a vehicle. 
coming from our students, we, we believe that we need to fill their needs, you know, and um, what we are looking into doing is working with different patrons of the university, for example, SGA. We're uh, working uh, hand in hand with them so we can uh, possibly find uh, solutions to current situations. Aguilar says that they will continue working with the university and organizations to make parking easier for students. Most people agree with me that saying, you know, UTRGV does have a parking problem. Some people say there is no parking problem, which I, I don't see how they can say that there is a parking problem. Maybe my, maybe my suggestions as how to fix a parking problem weren't the right suggestions, but there is a parking problem, and I'd say 9 out of 10 people agree that, that they agree with me. Although the official vehicle counter is still in the works, a test pilot will be used as early as November. Reporting from Edinburgh for UTRGV-TV, I'm Eliana Moreno. A Valley Native artist shares the history of Tejano women in a presentation at the Museum of South Texas History. Neda Alcantar has a story. For the past century, people have witnessed a Tejano music industry dominated with male artists and only a fraction of female artists. A speaker was invited at the Museum of South Texas History to share a presentation on the roles and impact of the women of Tejano music. We have our first lady. The guest speaker, Veronique Medrano, has been a Tejano Conjunto artist for five years, with three studio album releases. On Saturday afternoon, Medrano gave the presentation on how the Tejano music industry has changed since the early years, giving a past, present, and future insight. Her main message was to make people become aware of the demand of more support for women in the Tejano music industry. It has been something that for women has been such a point of of breaking those barriers because they continue to do it. It was just little at a time. I mean, it took 60 years for us to really see the fruits of the labor that women did within the industry. For Laura Negrete, coming to this presentation gave her an eye-opening experience about her own culture. Yeah, I, I did grow up here, but unfortunately, you don't learn about the history of this area, or at least when I was growing up, and then I moved away. So coming back here, it's kind of like getting a refresher into what this area is about uh, and exploring uh, this area anew. Programs and Events Officer Rene Vallesteros shows how the museum is an educational place for children and allows adults to learn about their regional history that they might not have learned in school. Because we want people to learn about their heritage, to learn about the history from, from their area, uh, this is really a public place. So sometimes you think about the collections that we have here, the things on display, as being the museums. But in reality, I think it belongs to the community. During the presentation, attendees learned about the evolution of women in the Tejano music industry, dating back to the 1930s and ending with Medrano's own music. Medrano hopes to see more women artists preserving their culture and heritage through the Tejano Conjunto music industry in the near future. Reporting from Edinburgh for UTRGV TV, I am Neda Alcantar. A notable Latino best known for his role on the hit TV comedy, That 70s Show, kicks off UTRGV's Distinguished Speaker Series. Our reporter, Juliana Quiroz, attended the event for more. The crowd went wild as Wilmer Valderrama walked on stage to kick off this year's Distinguished Speaker Series at UTRGV. Best known for his role as Fez on the hit TV comedy That 70s Show, hundreds of students, faculty and community members anxiously waited in line for hours before he made his appearance. I'm ready for Fez. I love Fez. <laughs> and while many were there to reignite childhood memories... I've been watching That 70s Show since I was a kid. Uh, I'm 24 now, so it's been quite some time. Others sought an educational experience. This English teacher organized this trip for her class to dive into how rhetoric is used by someone like Wilmer Valderrama. I had them go and see in, in the real world, this is how you know, people present themselves, how they establish credibility for their audience, how they you know, appeal to them emotionally. I didn't know how to speak English, you know, so... Valderrama I, shared his story of how he came to be an actor, detailing the hardships he faced coming from an immigrant family and being a Latino in Hollywood with an accent. We felt that his story would kind of match with what our students are going through and, and they would be able to see someone go from the rags to riches story. UTRGV's Director of Student Activities says their committee chose Valderrama because of his relevance and his ability to highlight how voting can make a change as he empowers American Latino millennials across the country with the organization Voto Latino. But even in between Valderrama's serious conversation on his life, immigration, and Latino empowerment, he still made the crowd laugh and cheer. 
Also mentioning that there are talks of reuniting the cast of that 70s show for a movie. In Edinburgh, for UTRGV-TV, I'm Juliana Quiroz. The Lori P. Andrews Paw Center is partnering with HEB to bring in-store adoption events to the RGV. Our reporter, Kenya Gomez, has a story. Uh, we're located on Trenton. Yeah, between Paul and Jackson. Visiting HEBs around the valley, the Lori P. Andrews Paw Center intends to inform the public about the importance of adoption and gave the community the opportunity to adopt and find these pets their forever home. Adoption Specialist encourages families to adopt since they have around 200 dogs and 100 cats in their facility. If you ever consider, you know, getting an animal, we really do uh, encourage, you know, going down to your local shelter and, and adopting one of these guys. Uh, they're always very friendly. Uh, they just need a little bit of love and care and it goes a long way for them. The adoption process shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes and $25. And uh, we just have these about, uh, some information that we have uh, paperwork. Uh, so, you know, just your valid driver's license ID and uh, to be 18 years old, of course. <laughs> Furry companions are always in need of love. And volunteers at the PAW Center are welcome to visit any day. Just to go volunteer an hour or two, to go hold kittens. Go walk dogs. It doesn't take much. It's just a little bit here, a little bit there. It goes a long way. For more information regarding adoptions and future events, you may visit their website. For UTRGV TV, Kenya Gomez. Local reality TV show Top Browning invites college students to participate in its upcoming season. Our reporter Marisol Villarreal brings us the details. You know, even though I'm proud of what we did, sometimes it's totally better out there. Get me? The truth might hurt. Um, you missed a lot of deadlines and, and uh, really in this business that's unexcusable. But other times, the winner is... The truth might just set you free. Fernando Sanchez. Oh, God. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Top Branding TV challenges college students to work together and provide the best possible outreach for local businesses. This includes shooting commercials, making websites, and spreading the word on social media. UTRGV graduate Fernando Sanchez won the first season of the show. He received $10,000 in cash prizes, including a trip to the beach and his own personal office space provided for six months at the Seed Center in Mission. And this is where all the top branding reality TV show magic happens. Inside the Seed Mission Center, you'll find Vanessa Saravia. She's the producer in charge of Top Branding TV. Out of the many different media jobs Soravia's had, she says that her favorite is media production. That's where her interest for reality TV shows grew. She chose college students as contestants because... I also love to see the participants grow, and I love to see um, them actually create friendships. She wants adolescents to have the same opportunities that others do in various parts of Texas. Her best interest, she says, is offering students all the right tools they need to be successful and have a chance at earning their dream job. Opening those opportunities to them means the world to us. For more information on how you can be a part of Top Branding Season 2, check out their website at www.topbrandingtv.com. Top Riding Season 2 is now accepting both UTRGV and STC college students. In Mission, reporting for UTRGV TV, I'm Marisol Villarreal. And here's Eliana Luna with this week's sports highlights. we lose some. Unfortunately, it is a loss for our men's soccer team as they were on a five-match winning streak, the longest it's ever been since 1992's NCAA's Division I season. That loss came Thursday, September 27th when they played Utah Valley. It was within five minutes of the match that UVU knocked in a penalty kick which shot out our guys' streak. But we didn't stop there. At 19 minutes in, junior Kyle Edwards kicked what is now his fourth goal of the season. Unfortunately, at the 30-minute mark of the first half, UVU scored again by number 16, ending the match 2-1. Moving on with the women's soccer, the girls were under pressure at their WAC opener Friday, September 28th against University of Missouri, Kansas City. With our girls fearlessly making 11 shots that night's game, None made it to the net as UMKC's goalkeeper saved those 11 shots. That Friday's match closed out with a loss 3-0. However, it's not all bad news for our soccer team. 
Sunday, September 30th, our girls defeated Utah Valley University with just minutes left on the clock. In the first half, defender Catherine took a free kick and was saved by UVU's goalkeeper, but midfielder Leah took the rebound and shot the first goal. No it's taken. Goal! Goal! In the second half, number 10, Emily Zapata, shot her seventh goal of the season, followed by number 14, Sarah Bonney, who closed out the match with a penalty kick, 3-1. And a few words from their head coach on changes made and upcoming WAC matches. Ultimately, you know, we, we knew that they were going to die out in the heat a little bit. That's why we saved Sarah Bonney for the second half. It seemed to work out pretty well. Um, you know, maybe they should have players sent off as well, so ultimately good result for us. In terms of road, road games, much better than last year. So, um, you know, two tough games, Grand Canyon, best stadium in the league, the one of the best in the country. It's going to be very hard. Um, Bakersfield, you know, they have some top players as well. So, um, you know, as usual, whack, very tough. Anybody can beat anybody, so it's exciting. The girls will continue with their conference plays Friday, October 5th, as they take on Grand Canyon. And basketball season has arrived, and here is how women's basketball is preparing. Uh, today was awesome, uh, you know, we've just been going an hour a day up to this point, be able to go, you know, two and a half hours is, uh, you know, we were worried, could, would we be in, in shape, would we be able to handle two and a half hour practice, but uh, props to our uh, strength and conditioning staff, uh, we did you know, about an hour of just full court drills, um, learning to communicate in the full court, and, you know, just working fundamentals. And, it's simple things like just catching the ball with two hands, passing it with two hands. It seems uh, real simple, but it's actually very important. Right now we have a different uh, offensive philosophy, so we work on our offense more than defense at the moment. Uh, but we're getting uh, to learn everything slowly. That does it for this week's sports highlights, but to keep up to date on full schedules and tickets, visit GoUTRGV.com for the latest. Reporting for sports, Ileana Luna. On this edition of Music Craft, Nathaniel Puente gives us an inside look on the Mercedes band Jetwad. Hmm, I really need a band this week. Oh, I wonder what this can be. Jetwad. Oh, hey, there they are. Did you ever want a three-piece post-rock group who delivers emotions into every chord? Well now you have one. Jetwad is composed of Ethan Nolan on guitar and vocals, uh, oh. Ed Trevino on bass, <laughs> Can you edit that out? Leave it there, I don't care actually. And Francisco Hernandez on drums. Together, they make up a growing force from Mercedes. Jetwad formed in mid-2017. Ethan, the band's guitarist, saw it as a lifelong dream to start his own band. Well, ever since I was around like 12 years old, I always wanted to be in a band. I thought it was like this, this thing where if you're in a band, that means you're like really cool and everybody will respect you. And then finally went when me and him were a junior because we've been friends since uh, the sixth grade. I was like, you know what, let's finally do a band. Jetwad's name comes from a warped spelling of a feature in the video game Overwatch. They originally started as a cover band where they played songs by Weezer. Over time, however, they developed their own songs and played them to audiences. On the side of being in Jetwad, Ed and Ethan attend UTRGV as computer science majors. Francisco left UTRGV last year but hopes to return in the future. At the moment, he is completely focused on his musical career and has even built his own recording studio at home that he hopes to lend out to musicians. Wrong records. I'm actually trying to like work it as like an actual business, you know, like get some little small bands to want to record a little glorified demo. The group currently only has one single, Moore's Head Inside Me, which is an 11 minute thrill ride with energy and passion in every beat. The group hopes to release their debut EP by the end of this year and have their first full length album out next year. For more info on this power trio, like them on Facebook and check them out on Bandcamp. So there's our report on the Mercedes band Jetwad. If you are a musical artist you know would like to be featured on Music Craft, send a carrier pigeon to my house. Reporting for UTRGV TV, I'm Nathaniel Puente. That's all we have for you today. But remember, if you have a story you would like for us to know about or know someone who is making an impact on campus or in the community, you can contact us through our social media or email us at utrgvtv 
at gmail.com. We have community and UTRGB news for you every week. See you next time.